So what are these four pillars of well-being? The first is awareness, which is where we would put mindfulness. And awareness includes our capacity to regulate our attention, which is something that mindfulness practices do. And it also includes another element, which is also strengthened by mindfulness practices, which is so incredibly important. And that is what psychologists and neuroscientists call meta-awareness. And meta-awareness is knowing what our minds are doing. Now, you all are a group that uh, um, uh, I think uh, intuitively understands that without necessarily having the word for it. But um, we've all had the experience of reading a book where we might be reading each word on the page and after we read a page or two, we, we have absolutely no idea what we've just read. At least I've had that experience. And um, the moment we recognize that, that's a moment of meta-awareness. It's a moment of awakening. And this is harnessing a really extraordinary capacity of our minds that we have, which is to know what our minds are actually doing. Now, lots of other creatures have awareness but they don't have meta-awareness. So this is something that is likely very distinctly human. And, and we think a, uh, uh, a, 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 a condition or a process which underlies all other forms of transformation. You've got to have meta-awareness for transformation. Okay, what are the other pillars of well-being? The second pillar of well-being is connection. And connection is about the qualities which are important for healthy social relationships. Qualities like appreciation and gratitude and kindness and compassion and empathy, all part of connection. And we know uh, that they can be directly strengthened through practice. The third pillar of well-being is insight. And insight is about curiosity about how the mind actually works and particularly the narrative that we all carry around about ourselves. We all have a narrative. We all have this internal dialogue and that's just part of being human. And the goal, so to speak, is not to get rid of this narrative, but it is to deeply understand the narrative and to perhaps through that change our relationship with the narrative. Uh, so the practice is not about fixing anything. It's really about uh, getting curious about it and understanding it at a very deep experiential level. And at the very extreme, we know that there are people who have a very negative narrative. They have negative self-beliefs and they actually hold those beliefs to be a veridical description of who they are. And of course, that is a prescription for depression. And so again, part of well-being is developing a healthy relationship to this narrative. And finally, the last pillar of well-being is purpose. And purpose is about identifying our sense of direction in life, our core values, which give our life meaning. And it's not so much about changing what we're doing to do something more meaningful, but rather it's about finding meaning in the things that we are already doing. So again, it's not about fixing anything. It's not about changing anything. It's simply about discovering what is really already there and nurturing that. 